and you want to bring some of these, you're watching us this week. Uh, this is good old peanut butter. And you know why we've got peanut butter here today? Who knows why we've got peanut butter here today and I'm showing you peanut butter. It's, it's for the middle school at Kenai, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Miss Kim? Right. So this week we're collecting and bringing peanut butter to church this coming Sunday, a week from today because we want students at our Kenai Middle School, the school that we've adopted. This is our second year. Miss Kim's doing an amazing job coordinating that for us. And uh, we appreciate that so much. Amen. Uh, we actually got in touch with them, Miss Kim did, about Thanksgiving help and they were covered. But I suspect, Miss Kim, they're going to need some help for a few families during Christmas. And that's all on the list, right? All on the list. So if you want to help some families this year, uh, on the table back there, Miss Kim has the paper she's talking about, if you couldn't hear, and it has a list of the food items that's required. I know Lisa and I and our family will certainly be putting together something. And uh, we want our church to be faithful in adopting our Kenai Middle School and helping families and students this, uh, not, not just with peanut butter, but with more things, and we're grateful for that. Mr. Rick? Um, Pastor, I'm, I'm led to ask you to speak to what the principal shared with you about a homeless student. Um, why don't you do that? Why, I would like for you to do that because they need to hear that from people who are out there in the trenches in the field. Yes. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> um, last year when we met with the principal and vice principal of the Kenai Middle School, principal shared with us that a large population of the student body is homeless. They're couch surfers, they go from shelter to shelter, and a large part of them we collect and winds up on that back table, winds up going home with them in backpacks, and that's what they get to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. That's why we help them fill up their little food closet and they depend on our helping them with their inventory. So uh, from our church to you, thank you when you bring peanut butter. By the way, don't bring like the gallon thing. That's kind of hard to get in a backpack. Uh, that's why we bring these smaller items that are like a little over three bucks or something like that. All right. So let's, let's, uh, let's fill them up with peanut butter next week. Chocolate. No, That's you. probably not it. No. <laughs> So just lift your hand there, Miss Kim. If you want to help provide some stuff for kids to grab in the morning, Miss Kim's taking stuff almost every week, probably more than we know, and some of us need to start helping more. That includes me. By the way, you can always use these for weights, you know, before you bring them to church this week. You get them early, all right? 
So guess what else we're gonna do here? You see all these boxes up here. This is pretty amazing. And uh, what did we have, 103 or so last year, I think? What was it? 170 last year? Okay. Oh, last year? Yeah. 108 last year. We've got 170 now. So we have to deliver these tomorrow. Is that correct, Ms. Sherry? I believe so. I believe we have to deliver these tomorrow, Operation Christmas Child. By noon. By noon tomorrow. So there are a few empty boxes back there. And uh, if you want to take one home today, get it filled with goodies, um, you know, socks, things like that, you can mark. There's information back there. Someone will be back there to help you if you want to take a box home. If you've already taken a box home, then make sure you bring it and get it to the church before noon tomorrow. Killian, my man who just got baptized. Did you have a question? What is it? We have peanut butter because we're taking it to the school so kids can eat it when they get hungry. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. He wants some. Yeah. Give him peanut butter when he gets home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to pray over our boxes this morning. So I'm going to just invite you this morning. If you want to come, feel free to do that. If you want to come and touch boxes and lay hands on them, whatever you want to do. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. So if you're going to come, go ahead and come now if you want to. And uh, I'm going to lead us in a prayer and bless the Lord. And then we're going to bless our boxes as they go around the world this morning. All right. So especially our leaders, please, if our leaders would, would come, we appreciate that. Psalm 103. Verse 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Father, we are so grateful for humility, selflessness, sacrifice that it takes to purchase things, put them in a box, take that time. And knowing that with Operation Christmas Child, these boxes will go around the world. Well, thank you, Lord. And we bless you. We praise you this morning. We love you. We bless you. We, we praise you this morning, not just loving you, but with our innermost this morning, Lord, as we as we dedicate these boxes to you. They're not dedicated to children. They're dedicated to you, oh God. Amen. To you. We bless you. We bless you. We, we ask, God, that uh, your anointing would be in every box. Every box would be a reminder when a child opens it about your love. Lord, we know there will be many children who will open boxes around the world, and some might open a box that's been packed here. And it will be the only thing they receive during the gift, the gifting season of Christmas. So, Lord, would you use these boxes to show your love for children around the world? Lord, we dedicate them to you and to the gospel and to your grace and your mercy as children, families receive them, children open these boxes. May it be a joyful experience for them. And may you use it in working out your will for each child. So Lord, we thank you for our folks here today and some not able to be here today who help pack these boxes, provide material for them. Uh, gifts, toys, and other things that are in these boxes. Lord, we, we give them to you as they're given in your name for children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to be in Psalm 103 this morning. Psalm 103. And uh, I think we have some PowerPoint we're going to get on the screen for you today as well. And so in Psalm 103, we're going to be talking about what is Thanksgiving this morning. So what is Thanksgiving? You know, uh, 
Oh, yes, Children's Church. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Children's <laughs> Church can be dismissed, and they are. You can follow Miss Nikki right back there. And there you go, guys. Thank you. All right, listen to your teachers. <laughs> okay. So in Psalm 103 this morning, we're talking about a grateful heart. Um, what it looks like to be a blessing, but really what it looks like to be people who are blessed. Now, I don't know if, if, uh, if you've thought about this recently, but you are blessed. You are blessed. You may not feel like you're blessed this morning, but you are blessed. You are. You, you, you live in uh, the, the, the top few percent in a country where you have access to everything you need. You may not feel like you have everything, but you have everything you need. You have, you, you have access to it in this country. Um, you're, you're here, and so you're able to be mobile at some level. Sometimes when my old knees get on the side of the bed, I wonder how long that's going to last. But we're all mobile at some level. Amen? Uh, we're blessed. We're blessed people. But, but when we know Jesus as our Savior, we're really blessed. We're really blessed. So David here is talking, and it really is what, what in this psalm, it, we, what we might call a hymn. Something that David would have sang. In fact, there are songs that come out of this, right, Ms. Tina? There are many songs that come out of Psalm 103. And uh, that talk about blessed and blessing and oh, bless the Lord and those kinds of, of phrases. So... You know, usually you don't get a chance to talk and participate too much in a service, but today you do. Today we're just going to take a couple of minutes and, and just talk about what is Thanksgiving. Well, what is Thanksgiving to you right where you're at? What are some symbols that remind you of Thanksgiving? Maybe it's a turkey. You're, you're about to see one. You're about to eat one here pretty soon. Uh, what are some symbols of Thanksgiving for you? Come on, let's talk. What is it? Family, absolutely. What else? Yes, sir. Gizzards. Gizzards? <laughs> Neighbors. Neighbors. I know. What else? What are some other symbols of Thanksgiving? Scripture. Scripture, yeah. What else? What else reminds you of Thanksgiving? Changing of season. What is it? Changing of season. Yes, changing of season. Yeah. Anything else come to mind? It can, it's okay to talk about ham and gizzards and, um, you know, all that good stuff. What, what is it? Pumpkin pie. pie. Did you say that, Miss Joyce? Yes, pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah. Pecan pie. What else is a symbol that reminds you of Thanksgiving this morning? What is it? A food coma. Yeah, we're some of us are gonna have to be careful. That's gonna happen, right? Yeah. Anything else reminds you of Thanksgiving this morning? Cornucopia. What is it? Cornucopia. Cornucopia. Yes. Yes. Oh man, I could just go down the list of, of food. What is it? An extra ten pounds. An extra ten pounds. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I could just go down the food list, right? So many good things remind me of uh, Thanksgiving. I could just go down the whole family thing, the neighbor thing. Even, well, maybe not the gizzards, but they get close, right? Yeah, Thanksgiving. That next slide, if you would, there, Jared. So we're, we're going to be talking today about Thanksgiving in a way. Um, it certainly is a family celebration. There's no doubt about that. I mean... You know, it comes out of the pilgrims and Plymouth and all that good stuff that we know in our, our history and in uh, 19, or I guess 1620, about 1621 after they almost starved to death the year before. You know that story. Um, the Native American folks uh, saved their lives. Those pilgrims taught them how to farm our land. And uh, they put on a big feast, a big celebration with plenty of food. And just, but you know what? In, in the roots of Thanksgiving, you know what they did? They, they thanked God. 
That's what they did. So our roots in um, the U.S. and mainly Canada, I think ours is what, like the fourth Thursday of every, uh, of every year in November. Uh, I, think, I think it might be the second October, I think. Don't quote me on that. In Canada, uh, where they do Thanksgiving. So they've already done theirs <laughs> in North America. But it, its roots go back to the Lord, thanking God for good things. So it is a family celebration, there's no doubt about it, but I want to suggest to you that Thanksgiving is much more of a heart condition than it is a family celebration. Amen? Yeah. yeah. And so what happens is, is that, that uh, we think of the tangible things about uh, Thanksgiving as a holiday. And uh, what God is doing in the transformational process you know, in those of us who know Jesus, we've invited him to be our personal savior. Uh, he's the Lord of our life, you know, the boss of our life. And we, we trust that, uh, that we can follow him with his help. And by the way, you know, don't you, that you can't follow Jesus without his help. Amen, church? Amen, yeah. And, and, and so what happens is, is that in this process of transformation, right, uh, knowing Christ puts me in a perfect position with him. My, my position with him is perfect. I'm his child. I'm his heir, right? I'm destined for, for more than this life with him. And, and then not just my position, but in my practice, I'm not perfect, right? Amen? How many of you know you're not perfect? Yeah. If you don't know, somebody besides you can just give you a little one of these and tell you this morning. Because nobody's perfect on the planet. Not even those who know Jesus. So we've got this perfect position. We've got this sinful practice. So we're a saint here in our position. We're a sinner still here. Now we're learning how to sin less. Amen, church? And that's because in the middle of our position and our practice, our perfect position, our sinful practice, that's where what we call the transformational gap. That's where God's at work in your life and my life. And we're never going to be sinless, but we are learning how to sin less. And God is transforming us. And you know what one of the drivers is for transformational living? Is this thing we call a heart condition that's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Let's look here at what David says this morning. And uh, here's what he says in, in the psalm. Um, in 103... I read the first two verses there. Bless the Lord. He would have sang this. I'm not. I'll, I'll spare you. Uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then he goes on in verse 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and, and forget not all his benefits. We're going to talk about the five benefits this morning. Um, that David says we should always remember and be thankful for, right? And here he begins to name them in verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you or showers you with loving kindness and tender mercies, and then he ends these five benefits in verse 5. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's pray together this morning. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for how it encourages us, instructs us, teaches us. And so, Holy Spirit, you be our teacher this morning. And we just want to bless you, Lord. We just want to praise you because we love you. Thank you that you first loved us. And Lord, we have so much to be thankful for in this holiday season. Our family celebration that's going on here at church, the family celebrations that will go on in our community in North America uh, this Thursday as families come together. But Lord, we want to pray this morning for those who won't be having those family celebrations. Lord, would you uh, reveal some of those folks around us to us that we might ask them to partake in 
a family celebration. We might invite them for turkey or ham. Uh, we may uh, provide a meal for them during this week. Lord, there are so many in our own community, God, who are homeless. And this week is a hard week, just like Christmas is. So, Lord, as our church prays and thinks about what it looks like to launch a homeless ministry at the first of the year here as we continue to talk and stir and you stir our souls about that. Help uh, our thankfulness to you be something that motivates us to do better and to help people and to serve them with humility, with selflessness in a way that brings glory to you. So thank you, Lord, this morning as we look at your word. Again, Spirit, you be our teacher this morning. Thank you for the core truths that we'll learn in Scripture today that you'll teach us. But thank you, God, that you'll customize teaching to every heart and every life and every family beyond what you share with all of us today. Thank you that you do that, Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so just a quick context here. And it's on that next slide, Jared. So just a quick context here. We're, we're looking at the context of this psalm that David wrote and would sing. And the context is, is two things. It's bless, and, and it really is about blessing God. Did you know you can bless God? We usually focus on God blessing us, amen? That's typically what we think about. Oh, God bless me and mine. You know, that's how we pray. And there's nothing wrong with that. God does bless us in many, many ways. And he wants to bless us because he's a good father who gives his children good things. There's nothing wrong with asking God to bless you. But have you ever thought about how you and I bless God? That's what he says. Bless the Lord, right? And, and so we're going to talk briefly about what it looks like to bless. What does that mean, to bless? And then benefits. Benefit. Did you know that as a Christian, you have a benefits package? Amen. How many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have a benefits package where you work? Amen. Do you know what those benefits are? Maybe it's insurance. Maybe it's uh, vacation time or PTO, you know, paid, paid uh, time off or, you know, what's in your benefits package? Uh, maybe you used to have a benefits package. Maybe it's gone away now. Sometimes that happens. And, and so we all are familiar with this whole idea of benefits. I want to tell you, we've got more benefits than we can count in our package. Amen, as Christians. But David uh, calls forth and brings attention to the five main benefits in our benefits package as followers of Jesus. We're going to look at those today. But first, look what he says here. He says, bless. He says, bless the Lord in, in verse 1. And he follows it up with, oh, my soul. He, he says, uh, in the second part of verse 1, all that's within me, bless his holy name. And um, then in verse 2, he, he uses it again, bless the Lord, O oh my son. What, what's David talking about here? He, uh, he's, he's using the word bless as a way to praise the Lord. So you can bless the Lord. I can bless the Lord. We, we blessed the Lord this morning together as a church when we praised him. Amen. When, when we said, you are worthy, right? Worship is about worthiness of our God. It's really not about you and me at all. <laughs> Did you know that? Are you aware that, that very little is about you? Are you aware of that this morning? It really is all about the Lord. And uh, he's so special that there are times he makes it about us. And it's a good God when he does that and blesses us. But here David uses the word bless as a word to mean praise the Lord, bless the Lord. But it's a word that is a general word that, that means the way we praise him or why we pray. You know why is important, right? Why we praise him is because we love him. He loves us, and we love him. And David was going to sing about these five benefits. I want to tell you, when you get a hold of those five benefits in your spiritual benefits package, you can't help but love the Lord. And so he says, bless the Lord. He says that three times in these two verses right here. And, and, and he's saying, uh, praise, I'm going to praise him for 
the affection I have and the gratitude I have. And that's what praise is. It's showing God how worthy He is of our thoughts, of our love, our affection. Showing Him how worthy He is of our gratitude. Uh, and, and that's why we say that, that thanksgiving is a heart condition. It is conditioning our heart, the center of who we are, with all of who we are, to have this attitude of gratitude that we hear so much about in our life. And to walk around being grateful to God. You know, you can have lots of problems and be grateful to God. Amen? If you don't believe it, just look around the room. You think everybody in this room doesn't have problems? Everybody in this room's got issues. Some of us got more issues than others. Amen? We all have stuff. That's a good word, stuff. We just kind of call it, categorize it as stuff. We just kind of put it in quotes. You can put a lot of stuff in the word stuff. Amen? I mean, you can stuff a lot of things in that word stuff. And you can still praise the Lord. You can still love Him because of who He is, not because of what He does. We don't love God because of what He does. Amen? We appreciate it, but we love God for who He is. And God loves us for who we are, not for what we do. That's a works-based salvation. That's what we call works-based. No, God loves you this morning because of who you are. He created you in His image. He loves you in an agape love, right? He loves you um, in a way that He puts His rights and privileges aside, comes to the earth in the form of a Savior, dies on a cross, and that's part of what we're thankful for here in a moment when we get to the benefits and, and provides a, a, uh, a, 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 a redemption, a price of redemption to redeem us back because the wages of sin are death. And so he pays that price, right? And, and so we bless him. Uh, we praise him with our affection, our love and our gratitude or our thanks. But then he says, Another word here in this context, it's benefits. So he uses this word bless as a way to sing about praising the Lord. And, and he does it in a way that says, uh, oh, my soul and all that is within me. In other words, he, he's saying that everything that is in me, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't, there's nothing in me that I'm not putting in to praise of you, Lord God, of loving you at this very moment. Uh, of, of uh, being grateful to you for who I am in you and for who you are in my life. You ever get that way where none of your problems matter? It's just that conversation with the Lord that matters. Doesn't matter if you got the flu or COVID. It probably, probably part of what drove us there, you know. Doesn't matter if I can't walk today or I can. doesn't matter if I'm having surgery. I'm not saying it doesn't matter, matter. I'm just saying that what overpowers all of our problems is this big God. You ever do that? You ever ride a seesaw when you were a kid? Yeah. I was always the tall kid in school. That surprises you, right? <laughs> I was always the tall kid in school. And, and I, my legs were so long in school, in grade school, that everybody who was on the seesaw, you guys ever ride a seesaw? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And uh, I could hold people up in the air and their feet would be kicking. <laughs> and I could be down on the ground. Unless a big kid got on because I was really skinny and didn't weigh much. And then my legs would almost touch the ground, but not quite, right? Well, that's, that's this idea uh, of uh, when we understand that the big God that we have really makes all of life's problems seem small in comparison. Because we typically are kicking our feet up in the air thinking that we don't have a big enough God for all these big problems. we got a small God and big problems. I want to tell you the Bible never presents it that way. It always presents a big God compared to our problems. Our small problems and a big God. And somehow David got there in this moment. And he began to sing about blessing the Lord with his soul. With everything that's in him. Blessing his holy name. Because a name is important. It's characteristic of who a person is. 
Blessing the Lord again. Oh, my soul. I don't know how to do it any better, David says. Oh, my soul. I don't know how to bless you anymore. I blessed you within every inch or every part of my being. I don't know what else I have to put into it. You ever get there occasionally? We call that spiritual renewal. When we're, when we're at that place where nothing matters but my intimate relationship with you, Lord, and you're making me better because of this time I'm spending with you, that's what we call a breakthrough. That's what we call spiritual renewal. That, that's what we call having a, a moment, an experience with the Lord. How long has it been since you had one of those? Amen? I was thinking about this this week as I was reading this passage and praying over it. Lord, how long has it been since I, I had one of those kind of moments with you where nothing else mattered? I was in the car or I was in the mud. I was somewhere. But, and I'm going to tell you, it's been a while. And so I, I kind of had one of those this week with the Lord. Amen. I pray that you'll think about that this week. Have one of those moments with the Lord where it's just nothing matters but just blessing him. Because I want to tell you, what matters to him is blessing you. And he does it a lot. And we're unconscious of it most of the time. So here's what he says. His benefits. Forget not all his benefits. So what are benefits? Well, this uh, benefits are the, the accomplishments um, of God on our behalf. What God puts in place for each one of us that cost us absolutely nothing. Amen. Now, your work, your benefits package may cost you. They may, it may cost you. They may pay you less and put more into what they call freebies for you, right? But we know that that's just kind of a scheme that often happens in the work world. But benefits that come from God cost you nothing. He already paid for them, and he already provides them. Let's look at what they are. That next slide, Jared. First, he says, here's the, the first benefit um, out of the second part of verse 2, that transition from blessed to benefit. And forget not all his benefits, right? We call them ours, but they're his that he gives to us. He's already got an inventory of them. And here's what he says. Here's the first one. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who forgives all? All your iniquities. Now, I don't know about you, but in my own life and the people I know, we struggle with forgiveness. Do you struggle with forgiveness sometimes? I think every human on the planet struggles with forgiveness. So when you're isolated and power principalities and, and uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil, uh, when, when you're giving too much access to the world, the flesh, and the devil, the first place... The world, the flesh, and the devil is going to attack you is in the area of forgiveness. He, he's, you know, those three enemies of the Lord and, and our enemies, when we're giving too much access to the world or and the flesh or and the devil, the first place you're going to get attacked is this area of forgiveness. The world's going to tell you you don't need it. Um... The flesh is going to tell you you'll never have it. Uh, and the devil will tell you you're not worthy of it. Amen. Are, are you tracking with me this morning? That's what happens, isn't it? When we're giving too much access to the world, flesh, and the devil. We know we have to give some access because we're perfect here in our position, but we're still uh, imperfect and sinful in our practice. And we're learning not to sin less. And we're... God is, is transforming us to be more conformed to his image. We know that. We're, getting, we're moving on the scale of a disciple to the right. We know that from no birth to new birth to milk to meat to maturity. And we know that we're moving in a transformational way to the right. We get that. But, but be careful because forgiveness is big. How big is it? <laughs> How big is it? It's big enough that God says it first. In fact, I, I'm of the mindset as I look at and study this passage that none of the rest of these benefits in the package, spiritual package that you and I have, would even be given to us or made available to us without the first one. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. 
It is the one that transitions us into who we were to who we are in Christ. It is the one who, who begins and initiates and triggers the old man leaving and the new person coming. It is the one who uh, that, that begins to say and to trigger and, and to first start this idea of becoming a new creature in Christ. This is Old Testament, right? This is not this side of the cross. It's the other side of the cross. But David understood that. So many prophecies that are right on target that we might read in the Old Testament. So many inspired parts that we call scripture in the Old Testament that would point us and go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. How do you know that on that side of the cross? Amen. You can only know that on this side of the cross. No, that, that's, that's not hindsight. That's prophetic inspired text in the Bible that we have that God provides for us. And, and he says, David says about the benefits who forgives all our iniquities, who forgives. Forgiveness is the first and the greatest of the benefits. I think that we're probably too flippant with forgiveness myself. I think it's really important. Uh, you know, the, the power of an apology, at least I heard that at some training this week in therapeutic foster care. We were in the training all week. And um, the, the teacher's been doing this for 50 years, in group homes and foster care. And she said something that's so, I mean, I know it, but the way she said it was so, uh, so weighty to the heart and life. She said, there is power in an apology. And I went, oh, boy, that hit me for some reason. Was that an arrow you just shot at me, Lord, or what? Boy, isn't that true? There's power in an apology. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgive you. And it doesn't matter if somebody says, well, I'm not sorry. Well, I don't forgive you. That doesn't, I mean, it matters, but in the big scheme of things, it's not about them. It's about you. It's about me. Being able to be released from a prison in which the world, the flesh, and the devil puts us in when we feel like we're not worthy of forgiveness. Or we feel like we'll never get forgiveness. Or we'll feel like we don't need forgiveness. Everybody needs forgiveness. Um, this teacher said something about when she got so much older, her dad said uh, to her, grew up in a very dysfunctional home. She said, my dad said, you know, we weren't very good parents, were we? She was an adult, midlife. midlife. She goes, oh, that healed me in many ways. She said, because I thought I was the only person in the home that didn't think my parents were good parents <laughs> in my dysfunctional home. And she said, when my, that was my dad's way of saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is there somebody in your life this morning, maybe the Spirit of God is teaching you right now and, and prodding around in you, and maybe he's saying, uh, here's somebody that you need to say I'm sorry to. Is there somebody that you need to apologize to? Because I'm telling you, for Thanksgiving to be a heart condition, we've got to put in play these benefits. We've got to understand these benefits. To be able to bless the Lord with all your innermost being, you've got, to, you've got to work these benefits. That's what David is saying to us as he writes them this morning. Who forgives all your iniquities. But not only forgiveness, we have that because of Jesus Christ who died in our place. We have that and we need to practice it with other people, save people and unsave people. doesn't matter. But he also says who heals, listen, who heals all your diseases. I love this word here um, because what he's saying is our, our mind immediately jumps to what? When, when we think of healing, right? Come, come down, James. Well, our, our oil's gone here, but we got a couple of oils somewhere. We clean probably here. Uh, it could be that you're somebody that believes what James says, that have have the elders anoint me with oil and pray healing for me. Well, we do that occasionally in our church. Um, 
You might, you might believe that. You may be thinking healing means that God is going to make you walk when you can't. Or healing is going to mean that cancer is going to disappear when I have it. Or it may mean something very supernatural to you. And that's why I love this word. Who heals all your diseases. This is a benefit. It's not just that that God can work in, because he can. It's not just that God can work in a supernatural way and touch you. I believe he can. I've seen it happen many times in almost 40 years of ministry. I've seen it happen to many different kinds of people. And if you're, if you're going to travel the world today, that's what you're going to see a lot of. You're going to see a lot of supernatural healing of God. And it's, it's because he does care, but it's, it's also because like first century Christianity, it was a sign that he is who he says he is. And, and, and it gets people's attention and they fall at his feet and confess him as Lord. Right. Um, Muslims all over the world right now, missionaries are telling us, are meeting Jesus in dreams. Now you may in our country, you may go, ah, believe that I can assure you it's happening uh, missionaries all over the world are telling us back here in the States I can't believe it. Um, Muslim people are coming to me and they're asking me about Jesus and I'm telling them I go why this certain interest now and they're like well he came to me in a dream last night in my room <laughs> it's just amazing what God is doing I'm shivering as I tell you it's just amazing what God is doing you see, when he says who heals all your diseases, that, that he who heals all, again, it's all your iniquities, all your diseases. It's not just a word that talks about a supernatural process, but it's what we call parallelism. It, it, it means that, um, that there is this, this parallel process where when you're walking with God, God is always involved in your life and in your life decisions. And he's always working toward healing for you at every level. Spiritual healing, physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing. Amen. And he doesn't have to do it all with his touch. He touches others. That's why I believe in doctors. Well, some of them. That's why I believe in health care. Some of it. Uh, that's why I believe in... Uh, herbs and medicine and uh, plants and all the things the Bible talks about is because God has given us people and he's given us a whole platform of tools and resources on the planet that help us heal. God is a healing God. Supernatural. and But he has this parallel process as we walk with him where he's always working on your healing. Did you know that? Isn't that cool? The way God does that. But then he, he also says not just this benefit of forgiveness and healing, but also he says redemption. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who redeems your life from destruction. Put that one up, guys. And, and what does that mean, to, to redeem your life from destruction? It, it, it's a word, redeem, means to rescue or to buy back. In some places in the Old Testament, we see that word, uh, Boaz, you know, he, he redeemed Ruth. He, he, uh, she was a, a close family member and there was a, a law in place where he could redeem her and claim her for himself. Uh, and, and Ruth actually initiated that process with him. So redeem can mean rescue, like Boaz did. It, it can mean buy back like Jesus did. Jesus bought us back. Right? He bought us back out of the pit of hell. He bought us back because the wages of sin are death. And the only way that the wages of sin are not death is if you're covered by the sacrifice of Jesus' blood on the cross at Calvary. Where he already went in and wiped your debt free. If you're debt free, it's because you follow Jesus. When you don't follow Jesus as a believer with his help, 
uh, when, you're, when you've not invited him to be your savior and the boss or Lord of his life and living with his help to follow him, when that's not in your life and you're not a professing uh, believer, practicing believer, you're still under the law. The wages of sin are death. And death doesn't mean loss of existence. It means that you won't exist with Jesus. You will exist not in heaven, but in hell. And I, I don't care what you believe. All you got to do is read the Bible and know there's a real hell and it's a painful place. And there are a lot of people I've met over my life who said, I don't care if I go to hell. I was one of those. Can you believe that? I didn't care. But I just didn't know anything about heaven or Jesus. That's why I said that. I came out of that alcoholic biker lifestyle. And I can tell you, it was only the love of Jesus that convinced me to give him my heart and life and follow him. It wasn't because I was afraid of hell. You know, there are two kinds of people. There are kinds of people where they're motivated by wanting to spend eternity in heaven with him and not hell. And then there are the other kind. I was the other kind. When somebody loves me like that, I can't ignore it. I can't ignore it. I have to respond to it. So there are two kinds of people. So he redeems your life from what? Destruction. That's what the text says. He redeemed. This is a benefit that we have because of Christ. This is one of the spiritual benefits. We're delivered from death or the separation from God. We're delivered from the pain of hell. We're delivered in this. That's all in the next life. In this life, we're delivered from the world the flesh and the devil's enslaving of us. They're not an authority that can rule over you anymore. Now, they can certainly impact us if we give them too much access. But the more you walk with Jesus, the more you learn to minimize your access to the world, flesh, and the devil and to maximize your access to the Lord. Amen. And we move toward maturity. And we take authority in his name. <coughs> And when we take authority in his name because of his blood, demons must flee. Amen. Uh, when we take authority in his name, uh, we don't have to follow through with those temptations. And so <coughs> the text says that, that this benefit here is that he redeems our life from destruction. Destruction. And then, uh, you know, thinking uh, about this, he moves on to the fourth one, crowns us who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. The end, it's interesting, this word crowns means showers, right? Now, I don't know if you take a shower or a bath. I like a shower. I don't want to get up out of dirty water. Amen. <laughs> I mean, every Saturday, I take a shower. I don't want to get up out of dirty Oh, that's why the water's so dirty. Every Saturday, right? At least I'm going to let me shower on Saturday. The good news is I had one before I got into baptistry. Amen. <laughs> Yesterday. Some of you don't know that's a joke. You must be showering on Saturday too. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's not even funny to you. But, but it, it's, a, it's that picture of a shower. You get in a shower in a cold room in the winter. That's tough, right? You turn on that hot water. Oh, you're just like, oh. Mm. For me, I've got bad eyes, so in the morning I have to get all that hot water in my eyes. And they start feeling better. Right? And then i got to put drops in. But I can't put drops in. Some things you can't do until you get a shower. I can't put drops in my eyes until I get that shower. I just sit there. I, I thank God that we've got two big hot water tanks. Because I just sit there and get that hot water. And the room's a little chilly. You know, you sleep better when it's colder. But in the shower, it just showers you. And you feel different. You feel clean. You, you, it helps heal you. There's so many good things about a shower. Well, there are so many good things about God showering us. Crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Another picture is the mother hen that you've heard a lot in your life spreading out her wings and her chicks get under there she she covers right so covering is a part of showering um 
I would say that showering is not a part of covering. Covering is critical. When you don't have a covering, when you don't have people who are mentors for you spiritually, when you don't have a church that's a covering, when you don't have family that is supportive and a covering who are Christians for you, you are in trouble. You're in trouble. Spiritual warfare, you're in trouble. I'm just telling you, if that's you this morning and you don't have a, co a spiritual covering where there are authorities in your life, and I don't mean authorities that boss you around. I just mean people who can take authority spiritually for you. People who can stand in the gap for you. Uh, people who, who can pray for you. People who can go to bat for you. People who can talk to you that you can talk to. If you don't have that kind of cover, you're in trouble. But I want to tell you, it's even better when you're showered. So people and, and resources and tools provide a covering for us. But here he says, crowns you. This is God doing it. God doing it through people is covering. And then, of course, the ultimate covering that we call our covering is the blood of Jesus, right? But, but really what he calls it is a shower, a shower of loving. How would you like to get in your shower and nothing come out, no water come out? Just loving kindness all over you. Can you imagine what would happen? You'd be stepping out of the shower thinking about 100 people. Oh, what can I do for that person? How can I serve them? Uh, oh, I need to say I'm sorry. Oh, I need to help them with the, the lawn. I, I mean, just showering you with loving kindness and tender mercies. There's no, there's no like, you ever, you ever have one of those, we do an Airbnb once in a while when I'm traveling and Lisa's along and we try to get, you know, a cheap Airbnb, Airbnb a cabin or something and we like the cabin better. But you know how you got the uh, portable hot water tank, right? That little tank. A guy like me takes a lot of water. Right? Do you know what happens in those portable ones? It goes from hot to cold like that. And you're like, oh, I feel so good. Oh, my gosh. Right? Yeah. That, that's not the way God showers you. He's consistent in the way he showers you. And, and David says there are two things that come out of his shower his loving kindness aren't you glad for the loving kindness of God in your life because you know what none of us deserve that and aren't you glad for the tender mercies of God now Jim you know that's inappropriate not uh, boy I'm going to kick you in the rear you do that again some of us grew up with parents like that yeah I'm one of them. I, my grandkids, we've got 15 of them, 10 of them live here. They still don't know what I talk when I'm talking about. When I say, you may wring your neck, boy. They still don't have a clue what that means. Right? Uh, that, the, those colloquialisms that we grew up with, that we all knew. I mean, I remember being a ringer washer as a kid, getting a back. Yeah, when I was just a little guy playing out in the yard, mom hanging up laundry. At the end of the day, that's where we got back. Anybody else remember that? That's in a rear washer, right? The, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. It's, it's an old washer you put out in the yard. You run extension cords. You plug it in. And uh, there's not much agitation to it except you getting in it when you're a kid. And, and, and uh, you're kind of washing stuff in there, rinsing it. And as you rinse it with different water, a hose, a hose, right? Cold water. Run a hose from the side of the house or inside the house, right, Miss Eva? You run it out there and then you change the water. Well, once the water got changed, Mom would put a little more whatever soap, lye soap usually, and, and we'd get a lye soap bath. You remember that? That's why I'm a mutant today. I got a lye soap bath. And, and uh, she'd rinse us off in there, and we were scared to death. We did everything Mama said to the T because she had pulled up the ringer part of the washer and moved it over here. We were afraid that she was going to lift it back up and put it over here and run us through the ringer. <laughs> That's where that comes from. Kids don't even know it. Uh, there had been a kid or two in a time or two when I probably should have been run through the ringer. But not by God. He's got tender mercies. Here's the last one. He 
he says not only crowning you or crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, but um, the last one here is, he says, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Oh, you just reminded me. We've got turkey and ham downstairs. We've got a big old huge thing of mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm trying to help you along here. We've got all kinds of desserts. Yeah. We've got all kinds of good stuff. And, and he says, he says, I'm going to satisfy your mouth with good things. Obviously, that's not just literally, but to satisfy your mouth with good things means that everything that comes into you comes into one through one portal, your mouth. Every, just like that is true. Everything that comes into you that you give access to. God wants you to give access to him because what he wants to do with that access is that he wants good things to come out of that. He wants good things. I mean, you are his workmanship. And, and God has saved us for good works, right? Not saved us by good works, but saved us for good works as we serve him. And then he says, so that, good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Listen, there's nothing more energetic than knowing Jesus, serving him, walking with him. It doesn't matter how old we get. I mean, I'm 35 and I'm starting to get older. Right? All right, I'm 65 and I'm starting to get doesn't matter. Uh, God can energize you. He does me and I know he does you too. And you won't feel like 65 when you're praying. Now, you might feel 65 when you're loading wood. <laughs> but there are things we can all do. The truth is we can all, as we get older in the last part of our life, I'm convinced of this, have greater impact in a shorter time because of where God's gotten us to than we ever had before. So if you're... Older like I am, more mature like I am. Well, sometimes I'm not mature, but I'm older. Then just know God's not done with you. He is not done with you. With Gary and Carol in our Sunday school class this morning. Oh my goodness, Gary's wisdom just popped out of there. I'm stealing him from your class. All right, we'll we'll get in. No, you're a karate teacher. I started to say we'll brawl, but no. no. Um, that wisdom just popped out of there. His life experiences. Right? He will renew us like the eagle. The eagle has a long life, by the way, and has a lot of strength. That's what it means. God will give you opportunities in your long life, and he will keep you strong as you serve him. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? All right, so... There are three ways, really, to respond this morning if you need to respond in a particular way. One is, uh, if you have never prayed and said to the Lord, to Jesus, Jesus, to God, God, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. And I know that I have a choice right now to either reject you or to accept you. And uh, I know that being good's not going to make me a follower of Jesus. I know that that uh, doing good is not going to make me a follower of Jesus. I know that just coming to church or being baptized or being religious in some way really doesn't cut it as far as being your child and follow you know becoming a Christian. There's only one way. Jesus said it's a, it's, it's kind of a, a lot of gates, but only one. And there's a narrow way. It's just this. It's so simple that kids get it. Kids understand it. Kids receive him like Killian that was baptized this morning, who's six. It's just that the older we get, the less likely we are to receive Christ because we push back in ways. We, we get embarrassed. All that is is access from the world, the flesh, and the devil helping us reject what we know is true. What we know is true. Let me tell you what's true. 
for you this morning. God loves you. Do you know that? That's true. You need a Savior. That's true. If you leave this world without Jesus being your Savior, you will not live with your Savior in the next world. You'll be totally separated. It's that simple. And the way you get a Savior is that you understand God loves you. You need a Savior because you are a sinner and that sin needs to be paid for and Jesus already paid for it. On the cross, He said, it is finished. He finished paying for it. His sacrifice, His shedding of His blood covers your sin but you have to receive that free gift of grace. He doesn't want puppets. He wants people who will respond to him in faith. Is that you this morning? Would you like to lift your hand and let me know and I'll pray with you right where you're at. You don't have to come down here. You just lift your hand. Pastor Jim, I want to pray and invite Jesus to become my personal Savior this morning. Make him the Lord of my life, the boss of my life, and with his help, I'll follow him. Anybody this morning? I pray for you right where you're at. Anybody? Just lift your hand this morning. Anybody? Pastor Jim, I want to invite Jesus to be my Savior. Just lift your hand. Oh, how we will rejoice with you. Don't listen to that old nasty voice telling you not to do it. That's not God. Anybody this morning? Okay. You can always talk to us downstairs. Another way to respond this morning to God's Word is uh, recommitting your life. Maybe you're right where you're at. Maybe you can't turn loose of one of those five benefits. You keep thinking about it. Well, that's God saying, think about it some more. Let's have a conversation about it. Maybe it's forgiveness. I need to forgive someone or I need to, to release something. I don't know. Whatever it is God's talking to you about. Recommit your life in that area. Follow His will for you. Seek it. There's a third way, too. You saw it this morning. Baptism. You know, um, maybe you got baptized when you were a baby or a child. You were brought up in a um, Catholicism or something else. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. That just means somebody in your life wanted to dedicate you to the Lord. That's what that means. It means you did not choose it. Somebody else chose it for you and dedicated you to the Lord. But now you are old enough to choose it for yourself. And we are uh, required, the Bible says, to be baptized after we accept Jesus as our Savior. And so maybe you've been putting that off for some reason. But I want to tell you, baptism is so important because it symbolizes the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord. When you get in that water, it's a picture of you saying to everybody, I have invited Jesus Christ. My public testimony, I've invited Jesus Christ to be my Savior. You go under that water, it's like you're buried with Christ. Come up out of that water, it's, it's like you have been resurrected to new life. Now you, you are symbolizing that you are a new creature in Christ. So important to be baptized by your own choice. If you'd like to do that, just talk to Pastor Tom or anybody here really uh, in our leadership team, myself, and we'll talk to you about it. Well, I think we're baptizing next week again. Okay. Yeah, we are. We are. All right, Tom, you come on down um, and uh, give us a word or two, uh, some instructions about eating, and um, pray for us and I'll, I'll see if you're a guest we have a special gift for you so on your way down to eat make sure you stop um, at the booth down there we want to give you that gift man what a service just so thankful for everything that the Lord provides uh, a couple of housekeeping uh, or just uh, reminders announcements uh, we are doing our final love offering uh, so if the Lord puts it on your heart or you have the ability Again, you heard what Pastor Jim said, these are $10 a box. We're going to have somewhere 180 to 200. We'll see if you guys hit 200. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see next week. But we're still a little light, but they're $10 a box. So if you have the ability or guys put it on your heart, we've got the love offering at the end. Um, visitors, if you're staying, please stay to join us in a meal. And, and we ask that our visitors, you can go ahead and go through the line first. Then our seniors. And then... Uh, Brother Mike, he goes last. 
No. Um, and then finally, uh, ladies, just a reminder, if you still have not, uh, we've got the ladies uh, ministry, their final their Christmas party. I think it's on the 16th. It's on the calendar. It wasn't on the calendar. It was something we forgot to check something on the app, but it's, it's visible now. Uh, there is things being ordered, so Nancy really needs to try and get a solid count. If you're a visitor and you're interested, Nancy's downstairs. You can talk to her or talk to one of the other ladies. Bring a guest. And I think that's about all I have. Has anybody got anything for the body? Anything I'm missing? We're going to do that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just are so thankful for all that you provide. We're thankful for your mercy, your grace, your, your patience, Lord, your faithfulness. Lord, it just goes on and on. But again... We are most thankful that you loved us so much that you sent your son to cover our sins to restore that relationship. Father, we just ask that we continue. We pray for a good week. We again thank you for our visitors. We ask you to bless this food under our bodies, that it might nourish us, and that we be doers of your word, not just hearers. In Jesus Christ and our Savior's name, we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed week.